Hi, this is Doc Progeny. Today I'm going to be showing some of the features of Progeny Limbs. Um, this is more of a demonstration than a support video. Uh, so here I, you'll see I'm in Progeny 10. I'm in the PC client version. The Windows version accesses some of the functionality slightly differently, but the fundamental functions are still there within the web version. So as we're looking at the Progeny install here, you'll see at the top I've got the pedigrees tab, the individuals tab, and then I've grouped together the limbs tabs. So we have the samples tab where you can organize your samples into various folders. We have the inventory tab where you can set up the basic inventory structure for your site. We then have containers which are basically all of the boxes, plates, tanks, and freezers and so forth that contain samples within your system. And then we have the workflow section as well. So let's have a look at the basic samples. So let's just open a sample. So as you click on a sample and open it up, you'll just open up a data sheet the same as you would for a, an individual. So if you look here, we've got some information for sample data. You can inherit individual data relating to the patient that that sample is connected to. And that's one of the nice things you can do with Progeny Limbs is you've got that connection to either a patient or a project. Some, some people actually use the individuals as a sort of project repository and then just link samples up to that below. So that's a basic sort of uh, way of uh, looking at samples. You'll see as you're clicked on a particular folder that you'll get an import option. And this is where you can import data into Progeny. And you can import pedigrees, individuals, and samples. If I just browse to a file, so here's a sample import, for example. If I open that, you'll see the sort of information you can import. So here, for example, is the unique identifier. For a sample, sorry, that's the sample ID there. You can imp you can select an existing field, sample type. Similarly, you can also set up concentration, extraction method. If we have a field for that, looks like we don't. If we don't have a field. What we can simply do is right click, create new field and just call that extraction method. If I can spell, that would have been better, but that's okay. Uh, new field here, we'll make this a date field. Date. Try again, extracted like so. Okay, and you'll see then I'm importing it as a sample. If I want to assign it to an individual, I can assign samples using an individual name, and then you'll get this extra option here. It could be that I don't have these individuals in this database, so we shall see. We'll click Import. Ah, it already, these all already exist in my database, and that's a unique one, so it can't do it. But that's basically how you'd run the import to get samples in. You can create formats so that you can run the same type of import again and again, and you can obviously import many more fields than I've just shown. So that's the basic sort of setup for Progeny, bringing in basic samples. One of the first things you'll typically do when setting up a limb system is to actually lay out your inventory structure. And it's done very much like this. You create the freezers and the structure within the freezer. So if you look here, we've created a new minus 20 freezer. It has a shelf. On each shelf there's boxes. You can actually open up a viewer to have a look. And from this viewer, you can even go straight to opening up a sample data sheet, like so. Or if you, if you may have also noticed the option was on there for running actions on that sample. And also, if you're in a workflow, going to the next stage. Now, this sample is in a workflow already. The next stage is two options, either draw a plate and aliquot or exhaust a sample. I'm not going to do that in this case, but you can see that you can run rapidly from this plate viewer. So let's close these up and go back. So if you look at the structure, you can see here you've got some base container types. So the minus 20 freezer, for example, you can have shelves. Uh, if you then look at a shelf, you can have boxes, racks, or a 96 tube rack. 
Now this is completely customizable to your situation, so you can have it mapping completely. You can create new containers, you can modify the child containers, so you can end up with you know quite a tree-like structure. Um, I know sites wherever you, you start off at the city level, then down to the hospital, the building, the floor, room, freezer, fridge, and so forth, and you can really build it out to be quite complex. Okay. Now each of these, as you add them on, will have a unique barcode. So if I click edit here, you'll see it's got box name, but it also has a barcode. It has positions for samples. You can write in some notes and description if you wish. You can also set security. So if this box is only available to one particular group, you can define that here as well. So it's quite a flexible system. Uh, it's quite nice having the barcode built in. You'll also see, as I did that, right click onto that box, but I can print a barcode. So if you physically take a box, you can put a barcode on, and then you can start working with that box just using a barcode scanner. Okay, so that's the fundamentals of the inventory structure itself. Obviously, you can get quite complicated with a very large structure here. You'll also see here all of the containers. Now, you can obviously just simply create new container by clicking the new container button but if you have a lot of pre-existing information in Excel for example then you can also import a lot of these boxes into Progeny as well uh, obviously that can save you an awful lot of time so the next stage are is the workflows but one of the fundamentally sort of powerful things within Progeny is this concept of right-click actions so if I click on these, you'll see some of the things that we can do in Progeny. Now these are all customizable, configurable. So here's, for example, is create a sample kit. So if I edit that, it'll show you kind of some of the things you can do. So it sets sample type to blood, initial volume to 10 mils. It pops it into the blood workflow, and then it goes to sample two, and sample three, and sample four, and so forth. So you can create multiple samples do different things with them, set different volumes, put them into different workflows. So for example, if you're working with a blood sample that comes in, you can split that before it comes into, into five samples and put those into five different workflows to do for different things. So I'll show you an example of doing that. So for example, if I go into scan mode uh, and simply right click and to change the action, and you can also set up a crib sheet of barcodes to run these actions as well. So I'm just going to simply, I'm going to do that one there, create sample kit. And you'll see it's gone away and it's created all of these different samples. And it's also gone in and custom customized the uh, sort of coding as well. So it's all 2060. So if I search for, go back to samples. And again, I could be scanning these rather than typing it in. So these are the samples that I've just created these ones here. And then if I go, it's already in a workflow, and to receive a sample is the next step for that one. And it then will ask me some standardized questions. And again, it's quite complex. You can set up quite complex workflows. If you look at the reactions, you can simply click New. And there's a lot of things you can do here. There's things like updating values, increasing, decreasing, printing, creating samples and aliquots. And with those selection of options you can build out quite a complex system as you saw when we were looking at the actions for the sample kit here I'm I have multitude of these reactions so again within the workflow you have individual stages which can be asking you lots of questions for example um, what have you done with that sample when have you done it what was the outcome and so forth and all of that data is then stored at the sample level within our database, which means you can then search, query, uh, and work out complex sort of uh, calculations from that as well. So going back to the workflows, you'll see here, for example, with the blood workflow, it's quite a simple workflow. It's nothing too complicated, but it can get an awful lot more complex. So re there's sample receipts. You can either extract DNA or plasma. Um, you can either exhaust it or you can go it into minus 20 for freezing. You'll also see as you click on the individual stages, you can see which samples are in each stage. So you can see just as a note, if you notice these sample tubes here are red, 
that means there's stock samples you'll see you'll have seen earlier that we had some green samples they were aliquots um, just to show you some of the other workflows that we have again it's fairly straightforward um, we can, you can get an awful lot more complicated than these ones again slightly more complicated so you can branch you can have options of where to go with this um, and you can also work through this with um, barcodes rather than having to do any typing in uh, so that's just a brief overview of how limbs looks again it looks very simple similar in web um, if you're actually on the sample level you can barcode scan directly into this area here for searching for a barcode um, and you can also run actions and work stages in the workflow doing that as well and there's also scan mode for doing the same sort of thing as well okay i'm going to stop there anyone has any questions uh, please feel free to contact me bye for now